the Vietnam War is for many an accurate microcosm of the Cold War. Both the Communist North and the not Communist South had the backing of the two ideological superpowers of the time. The South Vietnamese and the US were joined by soldiers from South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. But in this war there is one notable absence, Britain. For what it's worth, you should know that the American President Lyndon B. Johnson did try to persuade the British Prime Minister Harold Wilson to send combat troops to Vietnam. The reason was to give extra legitimacy to the mission there and Johnson even offered financial support if Britain aided the war there. In the words of Johnson's National Security Advisor, a British brigade in Vietnam would be worth a billion dollars. Irrespective, Prime Minister Wilson was pretty clear with his response, no. Now, you should know that this promise of economic aid would have been extremely tempting for Britain since, to put it mildly, the economy wasn't doing too well. The pound used to crash fairly reliably and America's offer to prop it up would have been extremely beneficial to Britain's economy. In fact, it was Britain's lack of money that led to it reassessing what is called its role east of Suez, which is basically whether or not Britain could afford to keep a permanent military presence in Asia. The British economy continued to be plagued with problems throughout the period of the Vietnam War, during which America's diplomats would often hint at the possibility of economic aid for troop deployment. Does this mean that Britain gave zero support whatsoever? No. Wilson made public his support at the US attempt to stop the spread of communism in Southeast Asia. Also, under US pressure, he made sure to dissuade other members of government from criticising the United States publicly. The thing was that Britain couldn't commit troops to Vietnam because the war was amongst the British public seen at best someone else's problem and at worst a war of aggression. Beyond this, Britain also, very early in the war, sent a team of advisers to help train the US Army in how to deal with guerrilla warfare. This advice was promptly ignored. Britain's lukewarm approach to the Vietnam War didn't do much to help US-British relations, which were made even worse by the fact that Wilson and Johnson disliked each other on a personal level. Between 1965 and 1968, US-UK relations reached a new low. Not like 1776 low, but the two weren't exactly best of friends either. For example, when Wilson tried to advise Johnson on what to do next, Johnson promptly told him to send troops or shut up. Over the course of the Vietnam War, Britain would never send direct military aid, which is why it holds such little place in British public consciousness. There was never really much chance for British forces to be sent to Vietnam. This was mostly due to a combination of public dislike for the war alongside Britain's financial struggles. Couple this with decolonisation and Britain largely not knowing what its future role in the world was going to be, and it's not surprising that it chose to sit this one out. And ultimately, very few people regret Britain Britain not taking part in the war. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching and a special thanks to all of these patrons you see on screen for their generosity in supporting the show and a particularly special thanks to James Bizonet, Party Boyko, Azarka Flash, Rob Waterhouse, Chris Wicker, Michael Reynolds, Thomas McGill, Gustav Swan, Winston Kaywood, Sky Chappelle, The Amusement Archives, Adam Harvey and lastly Raphael.